Hello everyone, I'm Jesus and welcome to the next episode of the Roads to, to Old School MTG. In this video, I want to uh, revisit the singleton format, which I've been playing a lot, a lot of in my playgroup, and specifically uh, 100 card singleton. My playgroup calls it Sisterton because it's from the Sisters of the Flame New York Old School playgroup, which I belong to. And I have a couple cards here, nothing major, but it's more about just f to make my 100 card singleton deck uh, more uh, self-sufficient. I have a lot of cards that I keep on swapping back and forth between this here is my uh, singleton deck and keep switching back and forth and it's very annoying, right? So I've made the commitment to keep this these cards here permanently and the more expensive cards uh that i would still swap kind of like you know like uh, um but I'll, I'll show it uh, i might make proxies out of it, like savannah i have a proxy savannah here right because i don't want to to spend 200 300 dollars on a savannah an extra one just to keep it here right so you know uh within reason i will i have bought additional cards to only stay keep here so i can avoid the swapping back and forth uh some cards are a little bit pricey i mean nothing big like just a few bucks but it's more about just the uh, annoyance of it right so even if it's something that's not very expensive it was still annoying bringing it back and forth uh, and even if some cards are not i don't swap them all that often or at all you know, I just don't want to, you know, just, I want this to be it, its own thing, independent of the rest of my collection. So towards that end, I have these two packages here, but I also want to talk about these, these four cards here, uh, since these are recent additions. So these two copy artifacts I got uh, revised, I got from a friend in the New York Old School group, um, bought it for 35 each in light play condition each. So a very nice uh, price from him. From him, appreciate it. No immediate plans for them, but honestly, copy artifacts is just a staple in old school. I've been meaning to get them, um, and so I have two. So I'm on, on my on my way to having a full playset. And then these two cards um, I got for free, also from uh, I got these for free from also from friends in my play group specifically for singleton so night soil it's a enchantment that another player in my group was playing and uh plays with and then definitely it's a very powerful card in the format that we play we we play um of course 100 card singleton sisterton but we tend to also play two-headed giant and it's you know like it's whoever wants to play um so it's always different teams um, but nonetheless, it, when it becomes two headed giant, Night Soil is even more powerful. One on one, I would say it's like so so. Still definitely useful. Still useful enough that I could, I still want to include it in my deck. But we tend to favor, if anything, we tend to favor two headed giant singleton. And in that case, this is crazy. Like you, you can easily make 10 tokens out of this. So that could really swing the game, uh, either your defensive or offensive. So it's um, very uh, versatile card, right? So I got one and then also Cockatrice. Um, this is just a good all around creature I've been meaning to get, I keep forgetting. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a two, four flying green creature for five mana. Whenever Cockatrice blocks or becomes blocked by a non wall creature, destroy that creature at end of combat. So this is pretty good against um, any type of uh, flyer. Right? Honestly, well, also, obviously you can block brown creatures, right? But especially flyers, a Shivan Dragon, you trade with it. Um, an Ifrit, this will kill the Ifrit because the Ifrit will not be big enough to kill it. Uh, but it can kill it. It'll trade with... Uh, Sarah Angel, or honestly any creature, right? It could it'll trade with a force of nature, so it's a pretty strong card that I've 
for for the life of me, I just kept on forgetting. But I got a a cool um, time shifted one from a friend in the play group. So um, these two cards, uh, and then in addition, I kind of forgot about another card. Oops, my color shift changed. There you go. Uh, which I'll, I'll put into the um, on the screen here. So let me sh show you the order that I made for these two packages here. Not like I said, nothing big. It's more about just to make my singleton deck self-sufficient. So in one package, so if you notice, I got just one of each, right? Because I'm just permanently keeping these cards in here now and avoiding the swap. So one James Day Tome, uh, I have four, but I always have to keep one here. Uh, even though I rarely use them, honestly. Um, but, you know, like I said, I want this to be self-sufficient. I like this deck enough that I want this to be a permanently, a permanent deck in my collection. And then I'm toying with the idea of making a, a second singleton. Because it was fun making this one. Um, so, same thing. Elvis Archer, same thing. I barely use them. But, you know, I just want to have four in my regular collection and then one that stays here at all times. Same thing with the Serenja, although the Serenjas I do definitely use a lot. Maybe not all four, uh, but still, you know, same reason. Wanna keep them separate. I, I just wanna know I, one is here and I never have to come searching back here again for a Serenja. Juggernaut, I barely use them, but same, same thing. Just wanna keep it here. Spinning Slug, I have used a little bit, not too much. But same thing like the other ones. Just want to keep this here and then keep the four in my permanent old school collection. Same thing, Felwar Stone, one here, Triskillian. I definitely use this a bit, not super a lot, but a bit enough. Um, and so, yeah, just want to keep one here at all times. I got a heavy plate version so that to bring down the cost. Armageddon, definitely, that's a big one. And City of Brass. So City of Brass actually got a gold bordered version. And that's the one that's going to stay here. And then I keep my Chronicles City of Brass with the other three. And then Armageddon, same thing. I have four Armageddons. And I definitely use them a lot. And so it was definitely was annoying to have to swap. Uh, but although honestly, you know, Armageddons, you tend to not play all four. But still, you know, sometimes I had like two different decks that had an uh, Armageddon mechanism to it. And then I needed to have all four, right? And then it was annoying to swap. So these cards should be here. And right, so cheap stuff, like 40, 40, 40, 60, 40. So this one has the pricier stuff. The City of Brass near Mint in the gold border was five bucks. Heavy play for uh, revised Armageddon was 350. Triskillian Heavy Plate 4th Edition was $2. And Felwar Stone Near Mint 4th Edition was almost 2 So this is a little this one is a little pricier, but uh, there it is, $13 total. Here was just less than $4 total for this one. Um, but it'll be nice to just have this permanent switch. Now taking a look at the uh, my current a singleton deck without these two additions, the Night Soul and the Cockatrice. Um, and I guess I'll bring up, I can, you guys can look at the actual deck itself. So 11 artifacts, Aeolio Pile, Chaos Orb, Proxy I have in there, Cyclopean Tomb. I have the real one. Uh, this one I just bought one of just to keep it there. I do have a proxy of it also, but I've decided unless I'm swapping I'm going to have the real ones here. Or, yeah, or unless it's like super expensive, like a Chaos Orb. Although, of course, Chaos Orb is so, it's a staple. I, every old school deck has it. So uh, I, I keep one proxy here and this one instead. For Stone, like I said, I only have four. So now I have the extra to keep here. Same thing for Sphere. I got a Collector's Edition one. The real one is here. I think I have a force field. No, no, I don't think I have a proxy. But either way, 
uh, I have the real one here. If I make a second deck, then I'll keep a proxy on the other ones, right? Because I'm not going to buy a second force field just for my second. If I make a second singleton deck, uh, one one real one is enough, and then I just proxy the other ones. Unless I feel like I want to have an actual real force second force field for other purposes. Um, same thing for IC manipulators. I have four off. I see many periods are expensive. They're only unlimited. They're not in revised. So I only have four. Um, oh, no, actually, now that I think about it, yes, yeah, I do have four. So this one here is a proxy. I have one proxy for that one. Like I said, it's like a $100 card, 80 bucks. So I wasn't going to buy a fifth IC for that. Like the force, force field, that was like... $70 so it's similar to the IC except the only difference is that um, I already have four ICs so I'm not going to pay pay for a fifth one right meanwhile I had no force field so I will I am willing to buy one real one to keep here but I'm not willing to buy a fifth IC manipulator right then you know that's just too much you know it's not it's not the same as buying like a fifth aeolio pile right that one I just can have an extra one and so forth. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if I have an extra one of this. Uh, I may, I may have missed this one. Uh, I'll see. Because, like I said, I want to keep this so sufficient. I don't want to swap as much as possible within reason. Tom, I, like I said, I got Mana Vault. I have only one real one. And I keep that in my regular collection. I have a proxy in here. Um, but I've been meaning to get more mana vaults. Uh, honestly, I don't use them, like barely have used it, but maybe since I only have one, maybe that's the reason why. Rod of Ruin, Taunus's Coffin. I have, so this is a real Taunus's Coffin. I have a proxy one, but I, like I said, I prefer the real one. So creatures, Argothian Pixies, Argothian Tree Folk. This is the one that is most likely to be removed to add the Cockatrice. Birds of Paradise, Clockwork Avian, Dancing Scimitar, Darkwood Boars, Elsa Deep Shadow, Elvish Archer, Arnhem Jin, Force of Nature, Giant Spider, Giant Turtle, Acacian Javelinier, If Biffy Freed, Jasmine, Juggernaut, Killer Beast, Lay Druid, Lana or Elves, Order, Feature, Rajan Spirit. This spirit is probably the other card I'm going to remove to add the Night Sword. Savannah Lines, Scavenger Folk, Sarah Angel, Sir. Chandler, Spitting Slug, Suchi. So Suchi is a real one. I only have one real one. Tetravis, Thunder Spirit, same thing. I only have one real Thunder Spirit. I just got him for Suchi and Thunder Spirit. I got just for the deck. Although Suchi is, of course, a very well used um, artifact creature. Eventually, I will have a playset. But I'm in no rush at the moment. Triskelion, Veteran Bodyguard. Definitely have like debated veteran, veteran bodyguard it's i mainly have it because of this and the force field combo force field is super um super valuable in uh 100 card singleton it gets used a lot for both offense and defense if you're offense you can attack and then you don't care too much about defense because you just force field or if you're like losing and you bring out a force field that buys you a lot of a lot of extra turns so it's just a great card in general so that's the reason why I want bodyguard to be, you know, to be useful as well, just as useful as this. I bring out a force field and it's automatically useful. I bring a veteran bodyguard and honestly, it's been uh, very mediocre. So I may take that out. We'll see. Whirling Dervish, White Knight. Enchantments, just land text, spare link, Sylvan Library. I only have, I have a proxy. I only have two Sylvan Red real Sylvan libraries and they're like $30. So I'm not going to, and I don't want to, I don't anticipate me needing more than two. So, and I, they do get used a lot. In fact, I'm using the two in, in one of my decks, old school decks. Uh, so I have a proxy in this one. I'm not going to buy a third one. This in, in, instance, this is Chen, Divine Offering, Giant Girl, Source to Plowshares. 
uh, sorceries, Armageddon Unbalanced, Desert Twister Hurricane, Ice Storm, Regrowth, Rafagat, and then your lands, uh, City of Brass, like I said, I that one I have four of Chronicles, and then I bought that fifth one right now. Desert, even with Battleground, Caracas, Caracas have a real one here, Mesa of If, I have a real one. I think I only have, I have four mazes, not five, but I don't anticipate using all four in one deck. So that's why I've been still being able to put the one of the four here. Although I may have five, I don't know. I got to double check on that. Mistress Factory, I have a fifth one in here. Pendle Haven, I only have, only have three, I believe. Um, but uh, I only put two at most in the deck. So then I keep one here. No problems. Although I might just splurge for another one. Maybe. Ruins. Savannah there is that's a proxy I have four real ones in my collection but I'm not gonna spend 300 for just to keep it here and strip mine I have an extra one um all right so that's the deck um and uh all right so that's the deck I was using well, that's the deck I am using. All right, so let's start pack opening up some packages. So these two cards are already definitely going in. I just it's just a matter of what I'm going to be removing for them. All right, first one from Woodbury Cards. Right, the receipt, the cards, just in this little tape. Oof. Sometimes, oh, okay, can I break it from here? Okay, I guess I can. So it's uh, just a envelope with cardboard in the middle. And then the cards inside, sleeved in one sleeve. So this is the more expensive one. So it's a little business card. All right. Ooh. This is disappointing. Look at the pen on this Triskelion. Spent here and it's bent all around here look at that he put this as heavy plate this is damaged look at that it has that is extremely disappointing man this is this card is way damaged it's not I don't know how he could have, or they could have thought this is, honestly, just looking at it, it looks, it doesn't look bad. Although, on, I, I don't know, did I see it from the back? Oh, yeah, I must have seen it from the back first. On the back, it's way more obvious. So, maybe they just looked at the front real quick, looked fine. Okay, that's a heavy play. Nah. Still, that's being generous. Huh? So let me look at the. All right, so let me share screen here. All right, so Fowerstone, fourth edition near mint. Yep, that's fine. Two bucks. Armageddon, heavy play. See, now this is a heavy play. This is perfectly fine. It's a little dirty, but th that's part of heavy play. It got, it got dirty because it was played. With City of Brass, near mint, gold border. Yep, near mint. So honestly, everything else is fine. But this Triskelion is heavy played. 
two dollars. This is clearly damaged. Right, and you know, it's just two bucks, right? But it's it's more the annoyance than anything else. This card, this is he also marked this as heavy plate, the Armageddon. And it seems per perfectly fine, right? It's just, you know, it's old and it's used. It's been played with. Uh, unfortunately, you can't get all the nuances on this, maybe in the back. Yeah, you can see, right? It's just worn out. Yeah, you can see the worn out there. Spec there. But look at the card itself. It's not pockmarked. It's not bent. But it's yeah, it's just dirty and worn. That's the definition of heavy plate. This one honestly is not played with much. This one is honestly is um the, the the condition of not considering all the bends and stuff, the actual condition of the card itself is this would be light plate. There's no dirt. But then I don't know. I don't even know how someone can get all this. I don't even know what happened for all this damage to occur. The card is still straight and flat. That is odd. But once I touch it, I do feel the grooves. So it's not like it's like a you know, like a barely, you know, like it's more visible than actual physical, right? It's actually, yeah, I definitely feel all the grooves. So yeah, I feel the bend. So it's actually bent. Just maybe it's been flattened out since then. Flattened out very well, but this is really annoying. Once it's sleeved up, it's, it'll, it'll be fine, but I'm gonna, Probably send a message to this guy. I mean, and take a picture of this. Look at this. This is clearly uh, damage. It's extremely annoying. Other than that, it was perfect. Everything else is perfectly fine. So, I may, I don't know. That really annoyed me. But the other three really. Uh, really made me happy. So this armor again and just a little cleaning and it seems like actually a lot better than I would have hoped for for heavy play and these two are definitely near mint. So I don't know what happened. All right, so that was annoying. All right, let's open up the next one. Okay, so this one has one of those plastic, big plastic um, folder type things. Other than that, it had no other protection and then there's no even any receipt. Well, these three have no, these two have actual little sleeves. Ooh, this one looks like the one I have. I'll see if it's, if it matches my, from my singleton. Actually, it's right here. Uh, it's not the same, slightly different. All right, so let's take a look at these. So this one up here. So James Day Tome, fourth edition, fifth edition, my mistake. Near Mint, 43 cents, Near Mint. Elvish Archer, Light Plate, 4th Edition. Yep, Light Plate. Mm, yeah, Light Plate. Nice. Uh, Sarah Angel, Moderate play 4th Edition. Yeah, that's a little crease right there. I can feel it. But it's not visible from the front. Actually, it is. Uh, ooh. I don't know. I think that I think that makes it damaged. As long as it, if it has a crease, I think that's damaged automatically. But honestly, 
that's the rest of the card is fine. So I'd say May Mater Plate is still fair. Juggernaut near Mint. Revised. Mm, yeah, near Mint. That's fine. And then Spinning Slug near Mint. Time shifted. Yeah, that's fine. And the, honestly, these are all on, under a dollar. So I'm not going to nitpick the Sarah Angel. Um, all right. That's fine. All right. So all of these cards. And this is going there. I'm going to separately take a picture of this. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I should just let it go. But it's extremely blatant. Look at that. Will you let this go? And it's two bucks. I mean, these these are 40 cents. And it's like, it's not even close. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's honestly you can see it more in person, all the the front. But of course, the back is extremely clear. The front is almost as bad as the back, except it's not as visible in the light. But in person, when you angle it, it's definitely visible. All right, we'll see what I do. But it's annoying. All right. So, but other than that, um. Now let's go into the deck itself. So like, with these two here, that's a hundred cards here. Just single sleeved, except for the, some of the expensive cards I put a perfect fit sleeve in it. But considering it's a hundred card deck, I'm not gonna be able to feel that extra sleeved one, like, oh, like this one, right? Force field, this is my, Collect this edition, I can already see it has the, that extra protection. I put an inner a perfect fit sleeve in this one. Uh, when I touch this one compared to this one, definitely I can notice that additional extra protection. But when you put it all within the same 100 card deck, it's not going to be noticeable. All right. So, um, um, Yeah, these are the cards that are going to be swapped out. Um, actually, City of Brass, I think I already took it out. Yeah, I took out City of Brass and Sarah Angel. I needed those two cards, so I took them out. And then I added these two, the Cockatrice and the Night Swarm. But in reality, now that I'm putting these back from this, I actually now have to take two other cards out. And uh, yeah, um, I think the bodyguard has slightly more upside than the then what's it called the um Argothian Tree Folk. Argothian Tree Folk five mana green creature prevent all damage that would be dealt to a Gothian tree tree folk by artifacts. But it's a three five, so it's not really gonna do much anyway. Um so yeah, it's just, yeah, I'm going to be switch. Yeah, I think that one and I'll be switching that one. And um, and what did I say? Go through in tree folk. Oh, yeah, and the Rajan Spirit. That one is a four mana, three, two green creature. Tap to this to remove flying ability from a creature. That's barely been. Utilize it's been utilized definitely. Um, sometimes not even by me, another player might play, and then you know, but it's so it's so niche that it's and the creature itself is underwhelming for mana for a 3 2. No other abilities, it's just this is way better or a night sword. All right, so uh, I'm gonna leave it up to here, um, but. And I'm going to be making these swaps, putting the ones from here, 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 the ones from here, back in my regular collection. And then, uh, and then I'll keep on looking if there's any other cards that I may have missed, kind of like that Aeo, Aeolio pile. I may have missed that one. Um, and, you know, like I've mentioned, just to keep this self-sufficient, but I've 
uh, it's been pretty fun playing. See how thick it is. And this is just um, one sleeve, right? Not counting the, air, the a few every now and then I have a double sleeve on some of these cards, right? Like, like the force field, but it's only like five cards max. Um, everything else is just single sleeve. And yeah, it's been it's been a very fun um, format. That's why I want to keep this self sufficient because uh, I will be. Uh, I'm very happy with the deck. A couple, two, three cards more that I may want that I'm thinking about. Wormwood Tree Folk, I think that's what it's called. Uh, that's a card similar to Kaga, just I keep forgetting about it and keep ordering it. I actually placed it in, in, placed it in an order just now. So that's going to be coming in. And then that might finally dethrone the um, veteran bodyguard. That, that, that card is definitely better than that, the veteran, veteran bodyguard. Uh, and then definitely I want to get the uh, Argivian Archaeologist, except that card is over $100. So I'm waiting for a good deal to, to go on it. Here's my um, uh, Thunder Spirit. This is in Italian. It's Spirito del Tuono. Um, I believe like 80 bucks I got it for. Decent condition. Uh, and yeah, this one is definitely double sleeved. Um, but I also have a proxy of it in case. But yeah, so cards like this have double sleeved. Um, but this is in general a good card, but it just doesn't get played much so unless i intend to use it then i will swap it out for the and put in the proxy here but since i have no intention so far i actually keep the real card and like i said i want to keep it here set it have a separate uh independent from the rest of my collection so that way i minimize the swapping which has been extremely annoying um, all right so i'm going to leave it up to there for today thank you for watching